Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Email me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing one of my favorite Rolex watches of all time, 40 millimeters in stainless steel and launched in 2007. This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Milgauss 116400 GV Glas Vert, the timepiece. 40 millimeters in diameter by 13.3 millimeters thick. You can see it's 49 millimeters lug to lug, and then if you include the end lengths, it's only slightly broader across the wrist at 49.6 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Pop open the clasp, throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. This is a good fit for a smaller wrist. I could recommend this watch for wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference because it's not that much broader than the case itself and the case has stubby and tightly downturned lugs. It wears well on both male and female wrists and it's a rare Rolex professional style watch that's elegant enough to look absolutely natural with any attire. You want to dress up, this watch is ready to dress all the way up with you. Uh, the timepiece is nice and flush, being only 13.3 millimeters thick with that dramatically sloped conical bezel it easily slides underneath the cuff there's the over the top here's your down the barrel shot and one more time the cuff shot taking a look at the bracelet you can see the milk house though simple is not an entry-level model it has the straight through center polished links that are associated with rolex's flagship models satin finished outer links it's the three link oyster bracelet, polished outer faces, removable links fixed by screws, and you can see that this clasp is fixed by a beacon to hook. These two things lock together, and you can actually, let me get this sticker out of the way. These stickers are the bane of my existence. Uh, you can actually see the lift lock system latch. So you don't just like pull it open. It's not friction fit. You do have to unlatch it. There is a higher degree of security there than you might expect. Satin finished and polished across the top, polished on the outer face. You can see the raised and relieved Rolex crown, the five millimeter tool free easy link system. So in or out, the easy link is equivalent to adding or removing one full-sized sizable link. And then you can see inside the clasp, there are some divots drilled into the side of the clasp, and you can use your strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet in the clasp. So three ways to size this watch. Removable links, easy link, and those divots. Rolling over the case, it's substantial, but it's graceful. It has the grace of a day date, a date just, or a Daytona, in that it's not the super case profile. The lugs are polished on their tops and on their sides, and in addition to the sweep, around the case. There's also a sweep from top to bottom. You can see there's a little bit of a rounding in profile, so the curves are complex, and you can appreciate that it really is not brutal the way a super case is. It comes across graceful, which is one of the reasons this watch works so well as a dress watch. Screw down crown, twin lock, 100 meter water resistance, and the gloss there. This was a sensation when it debuted back in 2007, which was the rebirth of the Milgaus for the first time since the 1988 model year. In order to avoid the unseemly appearance of the Rolex laser etched crown down at six o'clock, this green tinted crystal, which is Rolex corporate green, does not have the laser etched Rolex crown because if it were there, you would see it with the naked eye. The dial base is not the gloss black typically used on Rolex watches. It's actually a matte black, which gives this watch an unusual aesthetic. And that's before we get to the two different colors of luminant on the dial, or the fact that it has a giant orange lightning bolt second sand, or the fact that the dial is partially printed in orange. Now, the Milgauss launched in uh, 1955, late 55, as a technician's watch, allegedly for technicians and engineers working at CERN, the particle physics laboratory in Europe, it was an anti-magnetic watch at a time when a lot of these anti-magnetic watches were launching onto the market, like the engineer from IWC or the a magnetic anti-magnetic watches from Patek Philippe. Now what I like here is that the watch doesn't look weird. It's not even that thick considering the movement is housed in a solid block of soft iron. The idea there being to channel magnetic field lines around the hairspring for its protection. Now Milgauss, 1000 Gauss, was the original resilience of the first watches, but I believe this watch to be several times more resilient than that because not only does it have the soft iron cage around the movement of the original, but it also has a nickel phosphorus escapement and a niobium zirconium hairspring alloy. Uh, that niobium zirconium hairspring alloy was used on the late 80s IWC 50,000 ampere per meter watches, and technically Rolex is only claiming 80,000 ampere per meter with this watch. I suspect it's multiples of that. The rest of the movement is fairly stock Rolex. Manufactured caliber 3131 automatic winding, bi-directional action for smooth 
move with this 48 hour power reserve stop seconds a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock tolerance the 31 joule movement also features that neobium zirconium anti-magnetic hairspring handmade with a brigade overcoil profile that allows concentric breathing of the hairspring in any physical position helping the watch to get through the cosc chronometer certification a test that Rolex then duplicates with an additional sixth tested position as a fully cased up watch when the certified movement goes back to Rolex, creating a substantive basis for this term's superlative chronometer. Those watches, as tested by Rolex, leave the factory running minus two plus two seconds per day or better, all of it beating away to fairly orthodox 28,800 vibrations per hour. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Back with the Milgauss, two different colors of loom on one dial.